What's up guys, Navitz here. I'm going to do a little intro into my Beastmaster video. This guy, the Beastmaster. So things I'm going to be talking about real quick for this video are going to be how you can play a position for Beastmaster. So what you want to do is build into Helm of the Dominator, Necronomicon, and push towers, gank, and jungle as often as you can. So you're jungling if you can't put pressure on the enemy offlane. Um, you are ganking if you're level 6 and your roar, roar is up. And in between ganks, you are jungling. Uh, Beastmaster with his boars can put a lot of pressure on the offlane. With Helm of the Dominator, he can get fantastic creeps to help you along the way. When he gets his Necromonicon, you're pushing towers. Like boom, 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 boom. And then you can transition into other utility items or do whatever you need to do to help your team win the game from there on. Beastmaster has a ridiculously low win percentage right now. I think it's 46%, somebody was telling me. You'll, I'll, I'll probably speak about that again in the video. But we're going to watch a little video right now that I made while I was playing. I think it starts a little bit late, but that's the concept. You are playing offlane Beastmaster, Helm of the Dominator, Aura, or sorry, for the Auras, for the Creep Domination push, Necromonicon, you're ganking, you're jungling, and you're disrupting the enemy carry carries farm as much as possible. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Thank you very much. Main Beastmaster in patch 7.00. Now, I think that there's a strategy that's actually ridiculously viable with him that people aren't doing yet. I know Beastmaster doesn't have a high win rate at the moment. I think his win rate, somebody in my stream told me, I think it was Geo, told me that the win rate on Beastmaster is approximately 46%, and it's 46% I said something along the lines of maybe it's 46% um, in lower MMR brackets, but then he checked and it was actually like 46% uh, in lower MMR brackets and in uh, a 5k range, it was 46% as well. So here I am, I'm gonna, I tried this strategy out a couple times, I'm not gonna lie, it didn't work out very well for me very frequently. So this is one of the only games that it kind of works out. Uh, I'm going to talk about what I did, what the strategy is, what, what, the, what the goals are. We're going to watch this gameplay video. I'll start at the beginning by talking about it, but first let's take a second to analyze these teams. So if you look at the lineups, we've got Jakiro on my team, Undying, myself a Beastmaster, our carry PA, and a mid Rubik. Now we have a mid Rubik against, look at their team. Their team is core heavy. Look at this. Slark, Legion, Alchemist, Sniper. Pudge. You know what that means? That means that if this game goes late, I am boned. There's nothing I can do. Like, our team cannot win this in the late game. We don't stand a slither of a chance. A sliver of a chance. No chance at all. We don't slither. So there's no chance that we stand. The chances of us standing, we're going to fall over. We're going to crumble and die. So, we know our, our game plan. We talked about it at the beginning of this game. Our game plan early is to be aggressive and try to take towers. Try to win this game as early as possible. Can't let Alchemist get uh, ahead. We can't let Legion, you know, build his uh, build his uh, dual damage, and we can't let Slark go do Slark things. Because once Slark starts doing Slark things against this team, especially, oh my God! Even with the Silver's Edge, this PA can't stand up to him. Ruby can't stand up to him. I can't even stand near him. Undying's dead, and Shakira's dead. We're all just like we're fodder to him. He decimates us. So. Let's get back to Beastmaster. Let's talk about Beastmaster. What the strategy is, what I want to do. Now, the idea behind my Beastmaster play this game, or the reason for picking Beastmaster in this patch with, uh, with a strategy that I think will be particularly strong, is using him sort of as a position four offlaner. So you've got your safe lane carry, you put Beastmaster as a position four, Throw him into the jungle. Beastmaster, especially at level 3, you can try to get maybe up to level 3 in the offlane if you want to put some pressure on their carry. Um, but the goal is to get yourself up to level 3 and then start jungling. Increase your farm. Get yourself up to the most imbalanced item in 7.00, arguably, Helm of the Dominator. Now, I don't know why people wouldn't get Helm of the Dominator with Beastmaster. Everyone was talking to me like, oh, you shouldn't go Helm of the Dominator. Just go straight Necro Book into Blink and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't like that idea. I like Helm of the Dominator, especially considering the bonus uh, ability you get from Inner Beast on Beastmaster. So, Beastmaster as a position for utility, Helm, Helm of the Dominator will do a couple of things for you. Let's talk about what they're going to do. Helm of the Dominator. Helm of the Dominator will give you 6 to all attributes, 10 attack speed, and then an aura attack speed of 10, an aura health regen of 8, and you can also dominate creeps incredibly useful for a hero that gives bonuses to those dominated creeps and also if you have a team that's looking to team fight and push early beastmaster is your dude 
Patch 7.00, all about team fighting, all about fighting early. Um, don't pay attention to how long it takes me to creep, creep this camp. This is such a big mistake. I made a number of mistakes this game, so we're just watching me kind of farm jungle. I could have done this significantly more efficiently if I played better. I started the game off trying to harass this Legion commander, slow down his farm rate a bit, her farm rate a bit. Didn't go as well as I was hoping. Let's take a look and see where we're at with last six to nine. Not last six to nine. Yeah, we'll look at last six to nine. So, it. so I'm just farming jungle right now. I know that I have a sanctuary ready. That's another thing that's a really big bonus on the Beastmaster in this patch is that the sanctuary is ready for you. So if you do get yourself in a bad position, um, you can still get back here, shrine up, summon a boar, and you can go back to creeping at a really, really quick rate. So we've got Beastmaster ready to farm at a quick rate. We want to get our Helm of the Dominator up. Uh, for boots, honestly, I don't want to go. I don't want to go um, tranquil boots that much on Beastmaster anymore. I want to build him tankier. I want him to be a hero that's a force to be reckoned with in a five-man team fight. Now look at this. This guy gets a haste rune and just comes here and owns me. I'm a little upset about that. You didn't know I was here. If you didn't get that haste rune, I wouldn't have died. That's I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I'm sad. Now these guys, they've got like your classic. 3k area, 5 core team, and it doesn't work out for them so well, especially early game. So we're all, we're kind of even at this point. Rubik is, uh, he's not behind, but he's not ahead. What's his level? He's level 5 right now, and Legion's 4, Pudge is 3. Okay, so it could be going better. Or sorry, Rubik's doing okay, but like, uh, we could be doing better in lane right now. Now, our Jakiro is flaming me at the moment, saying that Beastmaster's not doing shit, but really what I was doing is I was out of this lane for him. One thing that's really beneficial with the Beastmaster is that you can pop in and out of lanes. I farmed slowly. Let's, let's, let's put that out there, guys. I farmed slowly. If I farmed more efficiently, I would be able to have level 6 sooner, and that increases the Beastmaster's utility significantly. If I get level 6 sooner, what it means is that I can start being... Uh, I can start ganking mid. I can TP bottom and push tower uh, and gank. I can get kills on heroes like Slark and Sniper. I can come out of the woods and I, the whole time, and whenever I'm not ganking, I can be farming because my boars are ridiculously good at farming and my hawk gives me vision everywhere else. So I don't like going with uh, wild axes. People who watch my stream, they often complain that I never use wild axes at all. Um, I do like to use them, but not uh, to the extent that everyone else does it seems so let's speed this up a little bit let's get our farm going i did go with the tranquil boots because i realized that i'm farming a lot in this game i don't we don't have a lot of uh, a lot i can do in this off lane here like slurk and sniper are pretty dangerous to team up against i mean the idea of getting shrapneled and pounced scares the fuck out of me so i'm staying back away from these guys a little bit just coming out here every now and then to get some farm um hoping that my team can do team things now it's about six minutes into the game do i have my level six yet I do not. So, oh no, I do have my level 6. So I have my level 6. I should be going to look for a kill at some point soon. I should be grouping with my team. My team's actually pushing mid, which is fantastic. I'm, I know that they have an advantage here. I'm going to let them push. And we have good pushing heroes. We have an Undying who can drop his tombstone down. Ridiculously good push. They're going to take this tower. I'm sitting up top. I'm defending our tower top uh, and jungling at the same time. So we're maximizing our jungle efficiency. And now we're going to start team fighting. So everyone's heading top. Let's see what my items look like. I have the Hedris, which also gives Aura health regen, which is good for team fighting. And my team, uh, sorry, my team is ready to fight. Oh, there, there's the, fuck, I got the roar off, but I didn't get the kill on the Slark. No! I wish I got that kill, how did I miss it? All right, I missed that kill, but here we are, we're team fighting. So we're trading with them, which is uh, not great. We should be winning these battles a little bit better if that roar pounce, Everything worked out. If that roar worked out a little bit better, we could have killed that Slark. A little bit unfortunate there. But our PA is going in. He's going ham. Shakiro hid in the bushes or in the trees over here. Now Slark comes back out, kills our PA. But we're just in a constant team fight. You see what I'm talking about? Patch 7.00 being a 24 7 team fight. When you have heroes like Beastmaster and Undying and Shakiro, um, you want a team fight a lot early. Uh, especially against a team that wants to get farmed, like these guys. So Alchemist is bottom. He's getting his farm up. Well, while he's getting his farm up, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take this top tier 1 tower. And then after we take this top tier 1 tower, guess where we're going to go? We're probably going to go bottom. and Or no, we're not. We already took that one. I didn't realize we got that. We're probably going to go somewhere else and take the next tier 1 tower. So our team, strong early. I'm about to have a dominate, or a Helm of the Dominator. I think it's flying to me right now, the Flying Courier, is it? Oh, yeah, my Helm of the Dominator is on the way. So I'm going to have additional creeps to help me. Now I have the Aura to help me push faster. I've got my Roar to stun lock one of their creeps. I've got my Hawk right here so I can see this guy. This Slark, he's seen. Hawk, beautiful. Roar that bit. Oh, I didn't roar him. I missed the roar. Suck. 
should have roared that. But I think I still get this kill over here. Let's see. Yeah, I start chasing. Okay, so Boar's slow speed is fucking incredible. So I start chasing him down. I know he used pounce once. I roar because I wasn't sure how much time he had left, but then we got the kill off. We got the kill off. So we got Slark with the kill. We're going to be pushing top. I need to dominate a creep right now. I got a helm of the dominator. I need to find a creep. I want one. And a good creep to take right here is this Ogre Frost Mage. Fantastic because he uh, puts ice armor on your... You can put ice armor on your uh, allied heroes. So I'm going to want to put this armor bonus on my PA. And what do I do? I'm probably going to come over here and put armor on this PA. First thing I did, put armor on PA. Now PA has an extra... <coughs> Eight armor, fantastic! And look at us—we're pushing again. What are they going to do against our team now that now that we're significantly stronger as well? We have the aura health regen, keeping or giving us sustain. We've got uh, the creeps that are helping us push. We've got my boars, and we've got my hawks for vision. So I'm going to send my hawk over here, give us vision all the time, and we're just going to take tier two towers as quickly as we can. Uh, looks like we're taking tower. We're probably going to get this punch. No, we're not. We're not going to get the punch kill, but we're going to get this tower. So we're going to get the next tier 2 tower, and we're going to get to a point in this game where something happens that you don't want to happen. You really don't want it to happen because it's the worst feeling to lose this kind of game. This is the type of game that we got so close to losing because we got really, really far ahead. We took racks, we took lanes, we got towers, we did everything properly. I'm just telling you guys how the game is going to go down. Everything goes down properly, but... We're not able to finish. We have to get one last set of Raxes, and look at our team. We start going too late into the game, and once we get to the point where we're almost too far into the game, we are screwed if we actually can't push into them. Like, if, if we can't do anything, we let them uh, farm too much, these heroes can hold forever. This sniper can just sit back and shoot, uh, uh, sh uh, shoot shrapnel and, you know, headshot us and have his long-range distance attack. Pudge can try to hook people in. Alchemist has ridiculous regen. They're a hard team. To, they're not the easiest team to push against, especially with acid spray and everything. So, they're pushing in. We're good to go. We're about to go and try to Rax at 12 minutes. I think we're going to get it. I'm pretty sure if my memory serves me correctly, we get this. And now, don't forget that I'm always putting ice armor on my PA. My PA is my focus for being or for keeping alive. So, PA is our core, our core motherfucker that we don't want getting taken out. She's going to kill people, taking care of that Pudge. We're pushing mid. Everyone else knows that they can't, can't come back. These guys are all pushing their lanes. One, because they're a little greedy. But two, if they come back, what are they going to do against our team? Two boars, an ogre. Uh, we've got all this AoE damage coming from Jakiro. We've got tombstones uh, dropping left and right uh, from, what's his name, Undying. And we're good. Now, my next item, after I get my Helm of the Dominator, is going to be my Necro Book. So I'm gearing up to get a Necro Book. The reason I want a Necro Book, so... Oh, I lost my ogre. That's sad. But before I lost my ogre, I put armor on myself one more time. Don't forget that. Now, the reason I want a necro book is the same reason I want a helm of the dominator. Just to increase the amount of creeps that we have in our uh, in our range for people to have to take care of. Fantastic if you're playing against, like, let's say a juggernaut. Oh, I got messed up here. I got hooked. Duel. Feels bad, man. Except for our team just donks them. We just donk them. Oh, feels good. Never mind. I said feels bad. That was a lie. Uh, so, the reason I want the necro books is for... is is obviously the continued push and the bonuses that Beastmaster gives to your team which is the inner beast uh, aura 50, uh, right now it's at 35 attack speed and we'll be up to 45 in a second but one thing you'll notice that happens in a game like this is we get under farmed uh, since our team is team fighting the whole time we don't have time to actually uh, to actually farm so let's move faster a little bit we're at one time speed let's get this sped up a bit they're looking for this sniper kill I don't know if they're gonna get it now where am I gonna go I think I'm gonna go Jungle. Yeah, well, I'm not sure what my decision making was, but I take over another ogre creep. Make sure that if you have a Helm of the Dominator, you're buying the correct creeps. I've got the Necro book up, and we're ready to push. So now I'm going to have two boars, an ogre, and the Necromonicon. So that's five creeps that, one, are ridiculously strong, and two... Oh, I didn't get that one either. One, they're ridiculously strong, and two, they're ridiculously good at pushing. So what are they going to do? I mean, Legion's got his, uh, his overwhelming odds that can kind of donk me up but aside from that everyone else is, is worried about all these creeps we're just gonna push in here at 15 minutes we're gonna take our second lane of racks hopefully we might we might not i think we do i'm pretty sure we get it here oh and he stole hook nice by the way guys if you're a pudge and you're playing against a rubik anytime you hook immediately rot after i'm sick of seeing rubik stealing hooks because pudge don't rot uh so we got lanes of racks but i think we're gonna get team wiped for it 
Oh yeah, they buy back. We're still staying here for a little bit too long. I don't know why we're going back in here. Now look, look at how significantly far ahead we are. I want to take a look at the positioning of this game. So they're pushing our towers. Somebody should rotate here, honestly, and defend this. But they're pushing our towers. We're going to go over here and try to get top racks. We need to finish this game quickly. We know that. We've got two lanes of racks. This one should be in the bag. It should be over. But it takes us a long time to finish this game. So I'm going to actually go through this a lot quicker now. We're going to see what happens. So the main concepts of the build are done. Get your Dominator. Get your... Oh, they, they turned that on us really hard. Get your Dominator. Get your uh, Necro book up. And then the next items you get can be utility items. A lot of people want to get Blink. You can get Blink if you need to be the Initiator as Beastmaster. But if you're just trying to push all the time, I don't know if you necessarily need the initiation. Maybe another item like a Solar Crest would be would be nice, or against a team like this, possibly a Crimson Guard. Um, you don't necessarily always have to go blink on Beastmaster just to get the Roar initiation off. Um, especially with someone like a PA. Like, PA closes distance, right? So we know our PA is closing distance. We're not too worried. And our PA is, like, she's got this battle fury. She's ready to go kill. We're, we're all ready to go do things. I gotta speed this up a bit. Let's keep going forward. Now, I think I almost die here, but... Nope, I kill him instead. So Necrobook, strong as fuck. Turn around, kill the Slark with a Roar and a Necrobook. And now we're going to push top, try to take this lane. So our only objective for the rest of this game is to take top. We should actually take get rid of these shrines, but we're just going to end. We're going to try to end it. This is one way you lose, you lose game-winning pushes, is getting hooked by Pudge. Uh... I was this, this one going for us? Our Rubik died. Am I in the middle here? I think I'm about to get messed up. No, I'm at the back. Let's slow down a bit. Got the roar off. Drop the necro book. Am I gonna kill him too? Okay. So also make sure you know how to use your different attack or your different hotkeys for attacking uh, or for controlling your uh, your creeps instead of your hero. You can set it up. You can change your hotkeys in your settings. So your all of your all of your creeps or all of your dominated creeps and your board like for example your boards your necro book and whatever you dominated with your helm of the dominator they can all be on one hotkey you can have another the way i set it up is f1 is my hero f2 is all of my units f3 is all of my units except for my hero so look we've done a lot of damage all we need to do is get this racks out this game is going to take a while longer to finish so i'm going to speed it up because this is the part where we're getting scared of them. These guys are getting to critical mass. Slark has a Shadow Blade. He can start doing Slark things. Like, he's not super powerful because he doesn't have his Echo Saber yet. It's kind of late, but he's got his Shadow Blade. This guy's got his Radiance up. Legion's getting some dual damage. Man, we're getting scared. Like, I'm starting to get a little scared of this game. We, I don't know if we can finish this. I got a Hawk waiting over here. Oh, they put some nice wards down. I didn't notice that before. But we're going for another push. Uh, we're gonna give it a shot. Alchemist isn't here. I think he's gonna TP back to defend. Going in again, pushing. They get a dual win off on us. Again, we get we get messed up. We trade. Alchemist comes in. He's strong. We even had the Aegis here. What can I say? We got the range racks, but we didn't get them both. So we need those megas. We need those megas badly, and we also need to go get rid of this shrine so we can control the map a little bit better. Um, definitely needed to organize a little bit better and maybe get a pick off before that push because we knew that they were trying to farm the map so i think a good idea for us in that game especially alchemist uh, especially alchemist he's always around the map because he's got that radiance a really good call for us would have been to look for a pick off somebody's always out somewhere now what we're going to do i think this is the part where we finally close the game off we're going to push through mid and i think we're just going to i'm going to suicide like all my all my necro books everything i'm going to blink in here yeah i blink in here and i just charge full, full full speed into this uh melee racks send all my creeps at it undying's attacking it non-stop and we get it we get it we get the melee we got mega creeps rest of the game is a wash but i just wanted to show you guys the dangers that come from a push like this you have to or from a strategy like this especially against a, a core heavy team um so yeah they didn't really have a real support i mean pudge was doing their supporting uh but i think you guys get the concept i'm gonna try to do another beastmaster video or another couple Beastmaster games sort of to iron this out. I don't know I don't know what the best way, best starting build is. I started with an Iron Talon this game. Don't know if it was the greatest. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But um, I will try a few more a few more strategies of it. Until then, uh, thanks for checking out the video, guys. Uh, hope you liked it. If you did, subscribe. And I will be posting more stuff as I think of it. I think the next thing I'm going to do is probably like an offlane or a mid Legion video. So uh, we'll see. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Oh, wait. I have this. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Subscribe. Do stuff.
one love see you guys